Hey y'all, good to see you again here on Grassroots Gardening. I'm Ryan, and in today's episode, I have got this tired, worn out, raised garden bed that needs new lumber, new soil, and needs to be planted with some good old fall veggies like collards and cabbage and lettuce and all that good stuff. So let's get to work, get this thing ripped apart, put some new dirt in here, get her planted up, because the more you know, the more you grow. So look at this poor old thing, you guys. She is tired. Dirt pouring out the bottom. It's rotten. Looks, well, looks like crap, honestly. Still got a few plants in here I'm gonna save, like this amazel basil from uh, Proven Winners. We're gonna use that. Some of our Italian dishes, some spaghettis and lasagnas. Got this huge Carolina Reaper that's still kicking. Got some nice peppers on it. I can't, uh, can't let it go just yet. A couple other things, maybe even try to save this old tired tomato plant that's falling over here. I think it's still got some life left to it. This here, maybe a ghost. Looks like a ghost pepper. We'll save it too. But look, our joints are coming apart. Screws are exposed. She's just in bad, bad shape. So we're gonna take our hammer, knock all this old lumber loose. We just went and got some rough cut and we're gonna stain it to match our deck down there, which is coming along nicely, I might say. Been working really hard on that. Anyway, another story for another time. We're going to stain the rough cut to match that. And this is approximately 12 foot 10 inches by 44 inches wide. So uh, let's go get to work, get our rough cut stained up, get all this old material pulled out, and make her look pretty again. We're going to use some 60 grit to kind of just buff this down. Rough cut, as the name implies, it's very rough, very splintery. Plus, I want the stain to stick there good. And we'll see how long that stain will last in this outdoor application. So like I said before, we're gonna be using the same stain, this Australian timber oil that we used on our deck around there. I really like this stuff, it's super water repellent. Has done a great job on the deck so far, and it'll help match the uh, the raised bed to our deck. And good thing we don't have to be super careful out here in the driveway. If we spill a little bit, it's no big deal, and we don't have to. We're not finishing doing edging work or anything like that, so we can just kind of smear it. This is the kind of paint I like because I hate painting and I'm about tired of staining after staining that entire deck. That thing is taking me over a month and I still ain't done. So this will be kind of fun because we can be messy and we can just go fast. All right, so while our stain dries, we're gonna come back around here and see if we can't get this old one uh, unscrewed, unhammered, and disassembled. So this is the fun part. That was easy enough. Things so rotten, it's just uh, pretty much falling. I'll just give it one good tap. It's just falling over. Maybe three taps. Huh. <laughs> I didn't even get to have very much fun doing that. It just came apart. Alright, well let's get it uh, moved out of here. And then I guess we'll go and see if our stains dry which I know it isn't yet well that was kind of disappointing it came apart too easy thing was so rotten a couple taps and it just fell apart whatever all right y'all well, you can see behind me uh, the stain was dry enough for me to get a few screws in it so I've got the frame built for the raised garden bed but sun's going down right now I'm ready to fire the grill up have a cold beverage and just chill out and enjoy the rest of this Sunday afternoon. So we'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to, uh, we'll, I'll get Jackson to help me flip this thing over. We'll fill it in with some of our compost. And then also I've got some of uh, this land and sea 
compost, which I love. It's fantastic material. We've got some Espoma fertilizer there. Got some flowers we're going to throw in just to help with pollinators and just to, you know, make it look pretty as guests walk out of the house. Some marigolds there to help keep the bugs away. And then some of our veggies. We're going to do some cauliflower. I'm going to try the squash. It might be a little too late, but we're going to try it anyway. We've got some broccoli, some collards, sage, a few mustard greens, and uh, should be turned out to be a pretty neat little raised bed. I love the way the stain looks, and it does match the deck you can see in the background, and it's going to make it last just that much longer. So this is rough cut pine. Uh, the, the material I pulled out earlier was rough cut, but it wasn't stained, and it lasted for three years. So maybe I can get five out of this really wasn't that much work my cousin brian has got the uh the sawmill and so if you have any sawmill near you you can go get this material a lot cheaper than you can at lowe's and it looks great and it lasts uh hopefully with the stain we'll get a little bit more life out of it so anyway we'll be back tomorrow get this project finished out y'all have a great evening and uh, i'm gonna go chill out a little bit all right guys day two here of our raised bed project i've got her all zipped together with screws the stain is now dry and so i found my buddy kayla wandering around so she's going to help me we're going to pick this thing up put it over the few plants i showed you yesterday that we're going to try to save um set her down and then we brought down some additional soil we're going to add some compost add a little bit of um, some worm castings and then plant some of our fall items as well as some of our flowers in here, sir. And right now we're gonna see if Kayla and I can lift this thing up. So as you see, we got the bed in place the soil level is just going to have to be a little bit low in order to keep the plants that are already in here from dying because if we cover up the bases we'll kill them so we're just gonna this is a little bit higher sidewall than uh, what we had previously but we're just going to put some of our bag material in here fill it up and then uh then we can plant so we're going to have a kind of a conglomeration like i showed you guys yesterday we've got the espoma uh, compost there and then we use a lot of this right here this is a real light airy mix that will help with drainage and just aeration to the roots so this is happy frog this is what we pot up all of our material in in the hanging baskets and in the flats down at grassroots i've got to be careful like i said a while ago not to get too buried around these peppers because if we bury it up on the stem it could kill it However, with the tomato, you see it's trying to put out roots already up the stem. So, I mean, technically we could come halfway or even more up the way of the stem of the tomato. We're not gonna, we're just gonna come up to about there. But we do have to be careful, unless we take these peppers and actually pick them up, we gotta be careful about covering that stalk because we could kill them. But the tomato, it'll actually benefit. I have in the past dug a trench and laid the whole tomato plant down in the trench and just let the tip come up and then you get a tremendous uh, root system that way and uh, the plant will do a whole lot better just because the root system is so crazy big on it and this is a just a little alocasia house plant that had mealybugs and i threw it out here just to get rid of it really and the thing rooted and uh so we'll probably throw it in a pot and put it back in the house because the mealybugs are now gone since it's been outside and the beneficial insects have eaten them all. So now it's all clean. We can throw them in a pot and we get our house plant back. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take and spread out our happy frog all in our new raised bed. This is gonna give us that light, really fluffy, good drainage uh, that these vegetables are gonna need out everywhere and then we'll come back on top with our espoma land and sea and then on top of that we will use our uh, worm casting compost and that'll be kind of be like our top dressing of fertilizer 
Okay. Now we're gonna put our spoma on top and then we're actually gonna compare the two soils because I've not actually compared them side by side. Now this has lobster and crab meal in it. Uh, that's why they call it land and sea. And this looks like a, a good bit more chunky mix. It does look like it has some uh, some sphagnum, not sphagnum, but uh, peat moss in it. Definitely some pine bark. Nice, moist, yeah, it looks like it'll drain well too, type media. Whereas the happy frog has got all the perlite in it. So mixing these two together, hopefully we'll get some, some great results. So I'm just gonna take this land and see, since it's more nutrient rich, and spread it out all all along the top. Our rosemary, I don't care if it really lives or dies to tell you the truth. I don't use it a lot in cooking and it's kind of deep down in here. So we're gonna do a little experiment and I'm just gonna go ahead and fill probably about halfway up the plant. It may kill it, but again, it's not really my favorite plant. It's really, really strong and uh, just not one of my favorites and I don't use it much. In fact, I don't even know why I planted it here. Something else I was gonna show you guys. Y'all know I love my Spoma products. And as we use the Biotone, you know it has all the beneficial bacteria and fungi in it. Well, they've also included it in their potting soil. So it'll be a double dose of all the good bacteria that these plants need for healthy root systems. And we're gonna add Biotone as well. Again, this will just kind of help spread out that bacteria and fungi so that we have it in our entire bed. So some of my friends up in the upstate of South Carolina, you can see this is a certified South Carolina product. They have a worm farm and so they take all of the, uh, the worm castings and the material that they're growing the worms in and they compost that down. Then they screen it and this is their product, it's C9. And I know I talk a lot about microbes and there's things that you really, you cannot see them. They are microscopic, obviously. But what people don't realize is how important those microbes are in the soil. And so if you see here, these actually have uh, different beneficial microbes in this material. And so the great thing about what we were doing here with the Espoma products and the Biotone, and now this, is we're really diversifying the amount of the microbes that we have and the type of microbes that we have in the soil. And it's just gonna do wonders for these plants. This, I only have one bag of this, so we're just gonna top dress uh, with this material. This will be probably uh, the most nutrient rich. So we wanna be careful not to overdo it, even though it's all organic, we shouldn't have to worry about burning. I'm just gonna put one bag of this just to kind of top dress. Then the rain's gonna take all that nutrient down. The microbes are down there doing those, doing their thing to help make the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, all of that available. And the plants should do fan fantastic. I'm gonna have this all in my shoes. <laughs> worm, what is it, worm poop? Worm poop. A lot of people think, um, you know, since this is worm castings that it stinks, actually has no smell to it at all. And it's one of the best organic fertilizers that you can use. I've never came in and added soil to a raised bed that I already had plants in because the problem I'm seeing already is there's gonna be no way that we can remove enough soil around each one of these like pepper plants. So I think we're probably just gonna have to scoop them up and bring them and elevate them or else they're gonna die. Again, the tomato will be fine, but the peppers are gonna, gonna more than likely croak if we don't get them elevated a little bit. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And it's so late in the season too, if we lose them, it's not that huge of a deal. We'll just try to bring up as much of the root system as possible and then i'm just going to elevate them in fact what i'll do is go ahead and bring this guy on down here and put him down here with all the rest of the peppers and open us up some more space down there to do our collards and plant some of our seeds so i'm just going to pack that soil back around his roots and gently press around to get him stabilized and then we'll go get us some more bamboo stakes and stake them up because the top really doesn't match the root system 
and it could blow over. This guy, this is our ghost pepper. Let's see if I can dig down in here. He's got a pretty good root system on him. So I'm not gonna bring him up all the way out because some of the roots are still attached. I could feel them still hanging on. We'll just have to get us some more string. But for right now, we'll just use that piece of bamboo. It's just like that. And then we need to get this guy and elevate him as well. And we'll just relocate him. Pretty, pretty puny little root system on these, to be honest. This bed hasn't been irrigated and I kind of during the hot months just kind of let it go. So you can see what uh, without proper irrigation and proper watering, the roots just really suffer. They're all dry. We may lose this guy. Again, if we do, it's no huge deal. I'm just trying to get a few more peppers out of them before the frost comes and then they're dead anyway. Maybe we'll bring him down here and put him in the, in the corner. Got a little bamboo right here. And again, we'll come by and tie them up here a little bit later. I throw I throw all of, uh, not all, the majority of my food waste goes into the compost pile, but evidently a couple of potatoes made it into the bed, and so they've, uh, they've been growing. Got us a nice little potato there. We might save him and eat him later. Yes, that. that's a potato. Uh -huh. Made me look for a second, I thought it was a tomato. Another little potato. We'll add him to the pile. Now we just need like 10 more of those for supper. All right, so we've got our kale and our broccoli, some cilantro, some sage. And as I mentioned yesterday, these uh, butternut squash, it may be a little bit too late in the season for these guys to actually fruit, but we're gonna give it a try anyway. And since these are gonna get quite large, I think what I'll do just plant one or two of them down here in this corner and then that way they can spill over the side if they want to and we'll see if we got them in time enough to actually produce uh, a fruit so we'll just experiment with those guys right down there yeah that's my broccoli i love broccoli and there's no better vegetable to me then fresh broccoli, especially if you got you a big block of Velveeta cheese and you melt it down and sprinkle it over them, can't beat it. So I'm gonna do a couple of rows. I think we'll start probably about right here. I'll bury them just a little bit deeper than where they were in the container because when you grow them in containers, they can get a little floppy, as you see there. We're gonna plant them about, I don't know, 10 inches apart. We're not going to plant way up the up the stalk, but just enough to support them to where they don't fall over. I think we can maybe get five in a row here. This soil is so nice to plant in; it just looks so good whenever you add all that fresh, fresh dirt. It's so easy. Yep, I think we can get one more. Do I have any more broccoli? Yes, I do. Hopefully that row is somewhat straight. I'm just kind of winging it. And then next, let's go, let's go with our, let's see, do we want to go with our, collars get pretty big. You know, they, they have uh, not a canopy, but they do get pretty large up top, so I don't want them shading the broccoli. So maybe we'll do kale next. This is a curly leaf kale, which kale is not my favorite food. I'm not gonna sit here and lie, but it is really good for you. And I do add it to salads and uh, just to try to get my vitamins. You gotta stay healthy, Kayla. <laughs> I like kale. Do you? Yeah, it's it's really good if you put it in smoothies. You can't even really taste a it. Smoothie? Yeah, throw it in with your vet or your um, you know, your fruits or whatnot. Okay. Some bananas, some strawberries, and then green it up. Cover it, cover it up. Literally. All right, I'll take your word for it, but <laughs> I 
I just eat it because I know it's really good for you. Yeah. That's all the kale I got. I thought I was supposed to have four, but one didn't make it. So then we're going to come and plant an oddball. Well, maybe let's do the sage. This is a purple leaf sage. Actually, it does have a really cool purple leaf to it. Mm -hmm. And I don't use sage in a lot of recipes, but I do like to add it to um, chicken dishes occasionally. And we'll just plant him right there. Because I've not planted the purple leaf before, but I know sage can get kind of kind of large. It's all right. So we'll put him on the end there. I think a gnat flew up my nose. Oh, goodness <laughs> gracious. Okay, next, I think, let's go ahead and do some cabbage out here in the very middle so that it can get plenty of sunlight. And I have never, I'll be honest, I have never done well with cabbage. It seems like something else likes cabbage more than me and mine always gets eaten. So we're gonna put it right here in the middle so that I can really keep a close eye on it. And if stuff does start chewing on it, that's when we're gonna use uh, a product like Dipel. Um, some people call it BT. I forget the name of it, but it's like Vasilius thumbergiensis or something like that. I'm just trying to act smart and use big words, but it is close. But anyway, it's a natural bacteria that you put on your plant and if caterpillars eat it, because they're usually the ones that are munching on these leafy greens, they eat it and it naturally stops up their digestive tract and they die. So you don't have to use harsh chemicals. It is a natural, you know, uh, bacteria that's found in nature. And of course, we always got to plant with our actual biotone starter. So I forgot to put it in the holes as I was planting. So what we're gonna do is just come around Add a little bit around each plant and then just work it work it in the soil to get it down closer to the roots but as long as we cover it up once once we water this stuff in the uh, the microbes will find their way down to the roots and help out help out the plant I think I'm weird because I like the smell of this stuff most people hate it but I don't know something does it smell like I like it too smell it Oh, <laughs> it smells weird. <laughs> yeah, it's a natural fertilizer. I think they use chicken. Yeah, I can smell the chicken. You should be. You should know that smell. Reminds me of home. Yeah. So Kayla's grandfather mm -hmm. is it? Is yep. a chicken farmer? Yep. Is that what you call it? Chicken farmer? Grower? Yep. He's a, yeah, he's a, he grows. He has four chicken houses. They get like 80,000 chickens every like six to eight weeks. A bunch of chickens. And it's a bunch, and it's a it's a smelly business, it but it smells a, like money. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> got to eat chicken. There you go. All right, so we got our cabbage spaced apart appropriately, I think, I hope. And then I definitely want to do my collards. So I'm gonna come on over here probably and do my collards. And remember to put my biotone in first. What I do is just sprinkle about that much, half a handful in each hole, and then just simply put my plant in right there, and he'll be nice and happy. And then here in a couple of weeks, we'll be able to go get us a, you know, a ham hock, throw that in with these collards, and it'll be delicious. Collards is one of my favorite, favorite fall, wintertime foods just because that's what mama used to make all the time it was probably i bet we eat collards twice a week when i was growing up they're good for you and the sun's coming out too at just the right time so these guys are going to get a right start with the espoma products we're going to water them in good and then let mother nature and sunlight do the rest and uh, help us grow our own food Okay, and next on the list is another one of my favorites. So this is a uh, cauliflower. It's gotten a little large. I've uh, been in the cell pack for a couple of days too many. So it's falling over a little bit. So we'll do the same thing as we did with the broccoli. I just kind of move some soil around it to help support it so it doesn't fall over.
We have to get some water on these pretty soon too because they are they're pretty dry. Now this one's got four in it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna call the smaller two and then out of the two that are remaining, we'll see who does the best and we'll call that guy leaving us just a single cauliflower stalk. And I'm betting it's gonna be this dude just because he's got a bigger stalk. This guy's kind of floppy already. There we go. Now we got us a row of cauliflower. And what we got left, we've got some um, red leaf lettuce. So this will be our salad mix. And what I'm gonna do is probably just make a little area right in here because we're kind of running out of room. So I think we'll use this area right here all the way up against the wood to do our, our lettuce. Now there's a good many lettuce plants growing in that one cup. So this is how you can get a lot of bang for your buck. You know, that one little cup is like a dollar or two. So then we can just gently take and break it up and then just continue to do that, trying to get individual lettuce plants that we can come in and plant individually. I'm just gonna dump me some biotone right here. You don't have to really measure this stuff out because you don't have to worry about it burning too much because it is organic. And then we'll just got this one nice little lettuce plant there. Let's see how many we can make out of this one, one cup. Maybe two. And we can plant it kind of close together so that it doesn't get huge. Just kind of kind of be delicate with it because don't have a lot of roots just yet. Let's see if we can split these two. Yep. The birds are really singing away, aren't they? <laughs> we'll just lightly kind of press around them because when we water them, we don't want them, obviously don't want them flopping over. So we made four so far. Let's see, we got five. Let's see how many I can get out of this without killing them. And here's six, seven. This guy's really small, but we're gonna count him. Eight, nine, and ten. So ten lettuce plants out of that one, that one cup. Add a little biotone, hold him gently, press some soil around him, keep him standing up. This guy is super tiny. <laughs> I have to be really, really careful with him. I'll just take my finger and make a little hole. But I bet you he'll live. Another medium sized dude right there. This pretty lettuce. This is the, uh, the fancy lettuce, I call it comes in the bag salads of our fancy restaurants and in bag salad at the grocery store. And my biotone got a little bit wet. So I'm just gonna crumple it up. And then we'll come plant our last two lettuce. That one's doing real good already. And then they're right there. So cool, that'll be our nice little lettuce bed. And we can come out here and grab fresh uh, lettuce to make a salad, grab a few pieces of our kale. We know it hasn't had any pesticides on it because we're not going to put any pesticides on it. And that's what makes me feel good about growing your own food is you know what has been done to it. You grew it yourself and things just taste better when you grow them yourself. All right, and to, uh, to finish up our raised bed, I've got some cilantro because I love to make salsa and we have tacos at least once a week, uh, usually Tuesday because that's Taco Tuesday. We probably could make a bunch of 
plants out of this cilantro too but it grows like a weed honestly so we don't need any more than one clump because this one clump is more than likely going to come up and over the side and just trail over so we're going to plant it right here in the corner next to our proven winners a mazel basil this stuff is a fantastic grower grows crazy fast and tastes absolutely delicious and gets pretty big i mean i've seen this stuff get on up three foot tall it can get it can get sizable give you all the basil you need for a long long time but that's pretty much all we're going to plant in here guys for right now uh, when our peppers and stuff die out down here then we'll add either some more collards or um let's see maybe even probably do some different types of lettuce maybe even we'll try to do the heading lettuce and i'll also have some carrot seeds and things like that that we're going to plant later on uh, in the season but for now that's pretty much it right there guys so we're going to get this thing watered in and um, if you want to try this yourself super easy we just use rough cut pine we stained it screwed it together added our soil added our biotone planted and now we've got our fall garden and we have our own food here in the coming weeks so i appreciate you guys watching and always remember the more you know the more you grow <laughs>